So what is the Denver Project for Humanistic Inquiry? I'm just curious, how many of you have heard of, heard of DeFi before? It's uh, a citywide humanities forum that's sponsored by MSU Denver. The idea is to promote uh, conversations about uh, abiding, uh, questions of abiding human concern. How often do you get a chance to have a conversation with the man who established an entire academic discipline? The 1992 survey showed that Professor Petrowski was the eighth most cited source in the arts and humanities over the previous two decades, coming in just behind, I kid you not, the Bible, Plato, and sure enough, Freud. Bringing Noam Chomsky here today is so timely. Europe is facing an enormous crisis with migrants and refugees, and the spectrum of fascism is really around this globe. This is the man that represents, in 2015, the fight for justice, Professor Chomsky, we are so happy to see you. Captain Reader. I begin by asking you to comment on uh, the role of the humanities in higher education today. Well, the humanities are the repository of uh, the cultural wealth of uh, human society. They provide us with uh, uh, understanding uh, the foundations for creative thought, the uh, contributions of the great figures of the past. So the question is, do we want to be civilized human beings or extricate ourselves from uh, the history of the human species and start as blank slates, uh, knowing nothing about except what we uh, saw on the internet this morning? And the role of the humanities is uh, to try to prevent the latter from being the case. What contributions are you most proud of, and which do you think have had the greatest impact in terms of scholarship and or society? Well, actually, that's uh, for other people to determine, not for me. Uh, I've basically worked in two domains uh, for all of my life. One of them is scholarship and science. I could describe to you what I think the contributions are. I think it's uh, helped to uh, open the way to an investigation of the most fundamental property of human beings, the primary distinction between humans and other organisms, the reasons why uh, we are having this discussion and our pet dogs are not, uh, namely human language. Uh, the parallel side of my life ever since childhood has been engagement in social and political struggles, efforts to uh, reverse, change, modify, uh, persecution, oppression. Uh, and now we're at the point, it's reached the point where we're actually facing uh, the uh, significant likelihood of extinction of human life in anything like its present form. Uh, just this morning, if you read the newspapers, you the uh, report that finally made the newspapers about something that's been known for some time, about one of the many very close encounters with termination of the species, 1983, when uh, U.S. Uh, experimental attacks against the Soviet Union, feigned attacks in an effort to uh, determine the nature of their defenses were taken seriously enough by the Russians so it almost led to a nuclear war, which would be a terminal war. This is one of many such occasions. There's others, uh, quite a few others. I'm wondering um, if you think that language is necessary for us to have complex thoughts and ideas, and if this is the case, um, as English is becoming a more used language and natural languages are fading away, do you think certain complex thoughts and ideas are also fading away? If you choose, you can form instantaneously a complex sentence of thought. You can do it much faster than uh, the articulators or the internal computation can be taking place. All of that suggests very strongly that the thinking is pre-conscious. But it happens so fast and so it with such complex thoughts instantaneously appearing that it's hard to imagine 
that there's not a good deal of uh, internal frequent mental activity taking place and a very I think significant research area for the future is to try to break through this barrier and figure out what these internal uh, mental actions are. You take a newborn human infant, literally moments after birth, the environment around it is just a lot of noise, uh, auditory, visual, sensory noise of various kinds. The infant instantaneously collects out of that noisy environment language relevant data and it then proceeds in a systematic way through the first months of life, a couple of years of life, by about maybe two or three years old, has pretty much the capacities that we're now using. You talk about um, how the foundations of language are innate and somehow things like artwork can cause you to be empathetic and communicate so much but without words. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Communicate in all sorts of ways. We communicate with gesture, with style of dress, uh, with how we comb our hair, you know, all sorts of things. All of these things communicate. Every culture that's known has some form of expression uh, that is roughly falls within what we loosely call music and, in fact, dance as well. It's hard to imagine that they have a selectional advantage in the sense of Darwinian evolution. They somehow fulfill a fundamental human need for self-expression, creativity, uh, interaction with others, uh, the communal, the creating social bonds, and so on. Of course, it's quite different from language. Music is true or false. Professor Chomsky, should professors be required to issue trigger warnings to students during lectures which, which deal with difficult topics? I understand the... Uh, concerns that lead to that request. My feeling is they're very much overblown. There's no reason why people your age shouldn't face difficult and challenging topics. Should if it grates on your sensibilities, the kind of thing you have to learn to live with and overcome and challenge. Do you believe that Bernie Sanders could introduce a free, viable, and competitive public higher education system in this country? He wants higher education to be free. And that's hardly a utopian ideal in rich countries. Very high educational standards, like say Germany or Finland, that's free. In poor countries, which have a impressive higher education system like Mexico is free. In 1945, when I went to college, uh, I happened to go to a, an, Ivy, an Ivy League college, University of Pennsylvania. The tuition was $100. I don't think there's any economic, legitimate economic base for anything but for education. But I'm perfectly happy to pay taxes so that the kid across the street can go to elementary school. Thank you so much, Professor Chomsky, for taking the time to speak with us. I know that it was incredible.